Welcome to today's episode, you guys, and I'm really excited that you're joining me for this one because I'm a big fan of the Avada. I know a lot of you guys are big fans of the Avada who watch my channel. I've made a few awesome videos about this thing. It's great for what it is. Of course, it's not anything near like my FPV freestyle drones, but for what it can do, considering how easy it is to use, how compact it is, I really do enjoy this quad. So I'm excited to try this thing out using the new upgrade kit from Axis Flying. This is a 3.5 inch upgrade kit for this thing, basically swapping out the whole bottom portion to extend its wheelbase out, give it better performance, give it better handling and things like that. But most of all, I think a lot of you guys are gonna be really excited because this means that this can now carry a full-size GoPro without issue like it has in the past. If you're somebody who's tried to carry a full-size GoPro on the stock Avada, then you probably already know that it has some issues doing that. This isn't going to be any kind of an installation guide because there already is one that exists made by Axis Flying. They did a really good thorough job showing you guys how to install this kit, and I'm going to go ahead and include that in a link in the description below for you all to follow along with. But what I will do is definitely give my perspective once I've completed the installation myself, let you guys know what I think about it in terms of a person who's trying to go into this as a beginner. Let's go ahead and hop into the installation and I'll go ahead and tell you what I think afterwards. So now that the installation process is complete, here are my thoughts on that experience. Again, if you are a beginner to the hobby, if you're a beginner to messing around tinkering with drones, electronics, especially if you're a beginner into the world of soldering, I definitely recommend you not do this as your first project. Spend a lot of time getting on like a soldering practice board of some kind before you even attempt getting into here because you really don't want to mess up these electronics. You really only have one shot. And if you mess that up, you're going to have to send it back to DJI somehow, some way, and hope that they will give you back a good drone that still works and then try it again. It's just not worth the hassle. It's not worth the trouble, so don't risk it. Just like in my previous installation video for the motor upgrade, soldering the motors the ESC is really quite straightforward. You're just gonna orient them the same way the stock motors were, and you're gonna go ahead and solder the wires in the same order to the ESC. There is some further soldering though, because the battery lead itself is a little bit further back, so you're gonna have to extend out the battery lead, and of course you're given all these materials with the kit. And there's also two smaller wires that you need to also solder that are connected to the connector, and this is because of the smart battery and all that stuff. And the thing about that though is that those are some pretty tiny wires. So you really do want to have a decent skill set again in your soldering skills to be able to solder the tiny wires to the tiny ESC. The pads themselves are really tiny and you really don't want to bridge that stuff or you know short circuit anything. That would be a bad day for your drone. But yeah, and on top of that, some additional soldering that you're going to have to do, and this is probably one of my favorite features of the overall upgrade so far, is the fact that they now have a USB-C right here very easy to access, just plug in, you can gain access to the files. When you do the upgrade, you definitely want to stick the SD card in there and it's just going to stay there because getting it out is a big pain. You would have to probably, yeah, you would actually probably have to remove at least a little bit of the duct just to get the dang card out. So it's going to stay in there. So make sure when you do the upgrade, you pop it in there, leave it in there and just put a good size one that you know it isn't going to get full too quickly. But now you have access to the USB-C right here at the bottom, which is quite convenient, but that did require soldering four tiny additional little wires with the little kind of connector that goes into the standard USB-C connector on the actual O3 unit that's there and it kind of extends it out, puts it here on the bottom. My biggest complaint with the overall upgrade is the fact that this gimbal is actually resting and being secured by three rubber grommets. And these rubber grommets, they're not super hard to take out when you're doing the disassembly, but the difficult part is actually putting them back into this carbon fiber frame. The carbon fiber frame, the base of it is actually quite thicker than the normal plastic frame that exists with the Avada. So that means that that rubber grommet has to be pulled through further than it would normally. Now they give you this little bit of a wire. They've kind of designed it to where you can actually wrap the rubber grommet around it. You basically put it through the hole, you put the rubber grommet around it, and then you pull through. Now I was able to successfully do one, but the other two, even though I was incredibly just slow and tried to make it as safe as possible to not rip it or anything like that, it literally just severed the end of that freaking rubber grommet right off, almost like a guillotine. So yeah, and there's really nothing I could have done about that. Trying to stick it through that carbon fiber any other way is just incredibly difficult. And yeah, I ended up destroying my rubber grommets. And I'm sure a lot of you guys will probably do the same thing. Maybe you guys will have better success than I did and good for you. I ended up having to come up with a different way to mount this thing. So if you're doing the mod and you inevitably mess up your gummies like I did, because it's really hard to pull in through that thick ass piece of carbon, um, what I did is put an M2 screw through the holes, put a flight controller gummy, like a stack gummy, with an M2 nut there, 
And then what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and cut that bolt flush with the nut. And then now the frame will go over that nut perfectly fine. And you won't even see it. See? Like so. And yeah, it, it seems like it's gonna do well, so we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys have any other uh, recommendations or maybe something better than this tool that Axis provides to try to get those rubber grommets through, that'd be greatly appreciated. Definitely let me know down in the comments below. The rest of the kit itself is quite good quality. It's nice to see the addition of the carbon fiber for the bottom plate. That's definitely better than the previous plastic bottom plate that the Avada came with. The one thing I'm a little bit concerned with though are these prop guards. They are like a molded plastic as opposed to like the really stuff rugged, rigid composite plastic that normally comes with the Avada. Those original prop guards are very, very durable. I've beat the crap out of those and never actually broke one. Did do a little bit of a bend on one, but they sell like a kit that you can just replace it pretty simply. So I'm sure that Ashes Flying probably has replacement prop guards for this if you do need to, but it definitely looks like in a hard impact or crash, you're probably just gonna crack one of these. Another nice feature is that they actually include a GoPro mount for you. The whole purpose of this upgrade is for you to be able to carry a little bit more weight, get some more thrust, better performance. And with that, because of the larger wheelbase and bigger props, you can actually carry a full size GoPro quite easily now. So they include that GoPro mount for you, which is great. These motors that were included by Axis Flying in the upgrade kit itself are a little bit different than the other upgrade motors that they do offer for the stock Avada. These are 3750 kV as opposed to the 3650 kV of those other motors. You might be somebody who's already upgraded to the other motors just like I had previously and you might be a little bit upset that you couldn't just use those motors for this upgrade. But something to take note of is that this is now a four pattern configuration for the bolts that are actually securing the motors which is a little bit more secure. This also kind of actually opens up the idea of using completely different motors if you want to. So that's actually a nice thing. The actual stock Avada that uses that weird three bolt pattern thing, that's a very proprietary thing. Not any other motors that I've seen besides the Axis Flying Upgrade ones that they made for it are using that pattern. So this means if you can find something probably around the same KV, same motor size, I think you should be pretty good as far as like not messing up with the flight performance too much to have an issue with the ESC you know, having problems or anything like that. But yeah, you should be able to use whatever motors that you like that have that same pattern. A lot of, again, other motors actually follow that pattern quite nicely. Well, all right, let's go ahead and take this outside, give it a little flight and see what we think. Let's go fly. Remote ID. Firmware update successful. Thank you. Caution. Aircraft entered altitude zone. Aircraft what? Oh, yes, I know I'm in an altitude zone. I can't go too high, whatever. All right, let's go. <sighs> eh, it's kind of raining a little bit, like a tad, just a tad. Not enough to stop us, so we're gonna roll with it. Normal mode, <laughs> yeah, right. All right, here we go. Power on. Holy shit. What? I wasn't, I wasn't ready. Holy crap. Okay. This is, um, this is so fast. This is almost like scary fast compared to what I'm used to with this thing. Holy crap. Woo. All right. <laughs> I got to reel this in. Okay. So this is a lot more intense than the motor upgrade. <laughs> Ooh, a lot more. Like I wasn't expecting the Avada to feel like this. Um, cool. Yeah, no, this is this is pretty sick though. The speed feels good. It's um not like super hauling ass according to GPS. I'm only doing like 35, but it feels faster. Like we're, we're fucking zooming. Climbing up and over the trees really easy. Definitely yaws. Trying to get a death roll going, but it's not wanting to do it, which is a good thing. Death roll, come on, you fucker. All right, maybe it won't. <laughs> I think we may be on to something then, yeah? Yeah. 
Yeah, dude, this is pretty sick. Battery life is actually not bad. I think it's actually more efficient now than it was with the after the motor upgrade prior to the upgrade kit. So that's actually good. I, I would I would probably go through a whole pack in less than five minutes. Right now I'm about to hit six minutes and I'm just about to hit that point where I want to go ahead and come back. That's not bad, man. That's not bad. I want to keep flying it. But yeah. It's starting to rain hard anyway, so let's go ahead and stop. <laughs> Still cool. Head over to us. Hey, look, it flies in normal mode, so if you guys are wondering about that. Normal mode fly. I don't know if you'd really want to do this upgrade if you're just planning on flying in normal mode. This is weird. Yes. Yoink. And it still turns off. Sweet. All right. Yep. Rain's starting to come in. So I've had the Axis Flying Upgrade Kit installed on my Avada for about a week and a half now, and I've taken the Avada with me to my Spain trip, and I've been flying it in some places that you probably normally wouldn't fly this thing, in some really rough bandos, trying to really test the performance level to see if it's something that's even really great to use for that purpose. Now, a lot of people are never going to fly the Avada that way, but it's more so about whether you can. These prop guards actually ended up being a lot more durable than I thought they were going to be. They're still not quite on par with the same level of durability as the stock ones, but overall they did pretty well. I bent them a couple times and I was able to kind of sort of re-bend them into shape, which was kind of weird, but it didn't break or crack. They did eventually finally crack though. I ended up launching the Avada down like a three-story elevator shaft into some bricks in an abandoned place. And it finally cracked the frame enough to where it doesn't fly very great anymore. It still does fly, but just not very good. So I'm gonna have to get some replacement prop guards. But down to the nitty gritty, who would I actually recommend this for? I would highly recommend that you do not even attempt to do this upgrade if you're somebody who's only planning on ever flying this thing in normal or sports mode. I just don't see the value in it. I don't see it as being worth it. This is for somebody who's planning on getting far more dynamic shots with the Avada, trying to do things at a faster pace, just flying faster, and just getting some really cool maneuvers that you would normally get out of FPV, something like we we're more used to seeing from real FPV drones. Still not quite up there with like a five inch, but overall for a prop deducted drone that you're able to do this upgrade to and get it to fly that way, I think it actually does perform pretty damn good. I do find it kind of strange that Axis Flying would introduce an upgrade kit for the Avada that's more geared to people who know how to actually work in electronics and work on drones when really the people who are going to be flying the Avada are more so people who don't necessarily want to do those things. They like to just have a consumer drone they can go and buy, flies well, very little setup, just get up in the air and do what they want to do with it. And this kit is sort of very contradictory to that. I definitely know a couple of people who've attempted this upgrade and weren't really successful, even though they do have a background and the skill set to be able to do this, it just didn't really work out well for them. Now they're stuck with Avadas that don't actually fly, so that is a bit of a downside, and you are taking a risk and a gamble unless you are very, very careful of what you're doing throughout the build process. But if you are somebody who actually does possess the skill set and you are somebody who's also really interested in getting more performance out of the Avada, then this is definitely the upgrade kit for you. Definitely check it out. I have a link in the description below for you guys to see. And without further ado, I'm going to show you some flight footage that I was able to get with this thing now with this performance upgrade. I was 